Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In this video we will pick up. As we left off in the last video. Exposing these cults. So you will know how they operated in the past. And others that are doing the same thing today. It is no surprise to us as Jesus Christ said they would come. Matthew 7 verses 15 to 20. And deceive many people. Even the very elect of God of heaven. The elect of God of heaven are the ones who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. By faith. And not based on a man-made teaching saved by works. As the Calvinist believe. The group is focused on a living leader to whom members seem to display excessively zealous, unquestioning commitment. The two most common Christian cult teachings are that Jesus was not God in the flesh. According to John 1 verse 14 and that salvation is not by faith alone. Both lead to the belief that Jesus' sacrifice was not sufficient to pay for our sins, and our effort is needed in the process of salvation, which is directly contrary to Scripture, Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. The three most prominent churches who teach this are the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses. Mormons teach that Jesus is not God, and that even God had to earn his position as supreme being. Jehovah's Witnesses believe Jesus is Michael the Archangel. And Calvinism teaches lordship salvation by works and follow a man-made teaching of John Calvin. All these cults teach that salvation is not the result of faith in Christ alone and Paul the Apostle is a liar. In Romans 10 verses 9 to 13. God's word says that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus and not by our own efforts or works. God's word says that we are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus and not by our own efforts or works, Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. Grace alone. Faith alone. Grace alone means that God loves, forgives, and saves us not because of who we are or what we do, but because of the work of Christ. John 1 verse 14 is one of the most important verses in the Bible. It reads, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word did not just appear to be human, the Word became flesh. And Jesus was God in human flesh. The Bible says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, Colossians 1 verse 19. Buffalo Bill Hawkins, his legal name, in 1934, in the tiny town of Purcell, Oklahoma. He was the sixth of eight children. His father was an honest hard-working sharecropper and his mother was a devoutly religious woman, one-third Cherokee. In 1952 Bill married Rosa Bell Bolding in Muskogee, Oklahoma and they then moved to Enid. A year later Rosa moved out, and a woman named Darlene moved in. In 1954 Bill followed his older brother, J. G. Hawkins, to a Christian Bible college, but Bill dropped out after just two months. He made his living selling Bibles and ice makers door to door. The ice makers did not work. One relative later told Robert Draper for Texas Magazine that Bill could charm a rattler. A brother-in-law told Draper, there isn't a bigger liar in the world than Bill Hawkins. The brothers, and Darlene, now moved to Graham, Texas and formed a rockabilly band, Buffalo Bill and his Whippoorwills. Bill sang out front and kept track of the money, and according to one of the members, he always kept the biggest part for himself. In the early 60s the brothers went their separate ways. J.G. moved to Romney, Texas and founded a church. Bill moved to Cross Plains, Texas, and raised coonhounds and opened a welding shop. He also convinced Darlene to use a settlement she had received to invest in a pair of laundromats. Then, in 1967, he joined the Abilene, Texas Police Department and moved Darlene and their four children to that city. In 1969 J.G. had a vision and moved to Israel. He began calling himself Jacob or sometimes Yagab. His career as a patrolman would hit a snag when then-Chief Warren Dodson accused Hawkins of lying about a November 15, 1976, incident in which four cans of beer and a dismantled radar unit were found in his patrol car. In a letter to his superiors, Hawkins said he left the car as he'd found it, though officers who used it before and after him said the radar was in place and no beer was inside when they left it. He resigned in January 1977, citing time-consuming personal business interests, including a mobile home park, which he owned, and about 50 rent houses. A one-time Bible salesman, he briefly attended Midwestern Bible College in Stanbury, Missouri. He also sang with his brother's rockabilly band, Buffalo Bill and his Whippoorwills. 
In 1972 one of Bill's children found him in bed with another woman and shortly thereafter Darlene left with the children, although she might have forced Bill to leave, the details are in dispute. That was also the same year that Bill's father fell ill. Bill raced back to Oklahoma where he sold his father's pigs and his truck, before returning, with the cash, to Texas. In 1975 Yagab, J.G., Hawkins returned from Israel with another vision. He opened a new church in Odessa, Texas, which he called, the House of Yahweh, Odessa. He preached a doctrine that celebrated the Jewish holidays and following the 613 laws contained in the Torah. It also relied heavily on the doomsday predictions in the New Testament book of Revelations. Most importantly the theology preached the importance of tithing, with one-third of all a convert's earnings going to the House of Yahweh. That part of Texas was fertile ground for church startups in the 1970s and Yagab's church quickly grew. In 1976 Bill filed for divorce from his first wife Rosa Bell. Why he chose just then to finally make this move is unclear, as he does not appear to have ever been legally married to Darlene. The next year Bill legally married a woman named Kay, with whom he bought a trailer park, although she now contends he told her he only managed it. Bill resigned from the police department and was ordained as a priest in his brother's church. He also invested in a Dale Carnegie course in public speaking. But the brothers soon fell out over theology. Yagab preached that God's true name was Elohim. Bill preached that it was Yahweh. In addition Bill opened his own church in his trailer park, the house of Yahweh, Abilene. And on December 2, 1980, Buffalo Bill Hawkins dedicated a new church building outside of Abilene. And in 1982 Bill legally changed his name to Yisrael, pronounced Israel, Hawkins. Bill's church quickly outstripped his brothers in growth. The house, Abilene, built a worldwide following with newsletters, a fancy website, tapes of all Yisrael's pronouncements and the careful crafting of Yisrael's message by Kay and the support of her son, Justin. And the tithes poured in, including money from ex-members of the white supremacist posse Comitatus. By 1990 the tithing for the house of Yahweh allowed high priest Yisrael Hawkins to buy 44 acres surrounding his church, where he established a gated compound. The 1-200 to 200 members who had bought a share of the property, actually it was a lease, were also allowed to buy trailers highly overpriced from a company owned by Israel. And after the house began to preach the end of the world was coming in the year 2000, they also began buying overpriced survival supplies in vast quantities, from Life Nutrition Products, a company owned by Israel. By this time converts were divesting themselves of all worldly property and turning it all over to the house. They were also cutting themselves off from all family and friends. The house, by any definition, had now become a cult. In 1991 Yagab, J.T., died of cancer. It was reported that at the funeral Yisrael fell on Yagab's coffin and bid him to rise from the grave. Yagab refused. In 1994 K. confronted Yisrael, Bill, with irrefutable proof that he was sleeping with another woman. He informed her that God had told him in a revelation that all men should practice polygamy. When Kay then filed for divorce from Israel both she and her son Justin were excommunicated from the church and escorted off the property. By 1994 some 300 members of the house had legally changed their names to Israel, to make it easier for God to recognize them on the coming doomsday, October, 2000. As leader of the house of Yahweh, Hawkins predicted the end times on several occasions. The latest was in 2020. He also said he would never die and that he was the second coming. But cult leader Yisrael Hawkins died on Friday, October 8, 2021. He was 87 years old. And his brother J.G. Hawkins, Jakob, died in 1991. Over the years many members have fled the cult. In 2012, K. Hawkins, who divorced Yisrael Hawkins in 1994, who wrote a book about her experience. She had to recover from the manipulation, mind control, and indoctrination. He keeps you in poverty so he can control you, one woman along with her three children, in the compound. She worked for $35 a week in a print shop operated by the House of Yahweh and was required, as all members are, to give three tithes of 10% each to Hawkins, those poor people, they are prisoners and they don't even know it, Kay said. Many of those who might want to leave the compound are unable to. They become so financially dependent. Their housing is through Buffalo Bill, their jobs are through Buffalo Bill, and when everything that you have is tied up within a cult it's hard to get out of the cult, Kay said some of them are afraid to leave. They are advised if they leave the house of Yahweh they are doomed to burn in hell. As you can see how members were forced to live. 
In this 40-acre compound and the charges that were brought against him, worshippers must first remove their shoes and feet and hands are then sprayed with disinfectant before they come in. Men and women are seated on separate sides of an eight-foot wall dividing the sanctuary. Women wear long clothing and veils for modesty, and everyone wears gloves for cleanliness. Nowhere is, Hawkins, influence more apparent than in the sect's 1,200-seat warehouse-like sanctuary, where a dozen poster-sized pictures of Hawkins adorn the front wall. When you think about all the people around the world, this man has influenced and deceived. It just makes you spiritually sick and so angry. And this why most people have fallen out. With so many churches. Cause of people like this false prophet. In 2006 that the Texas-based House of Yahweh sect had believers in the village of Kyandora, Kenya, 300 kilometers west of Nairobi. The tie could explain how Malik Obama became linked to Yisrael Hawkins, after the failure of Hawkins' apocalyptic prediction, noted the House of Yahweh leaders were out on bail after being arrested and restricted from inciting fear in the local population. Malik has described Hawkins' group as a partner organization, in a posting titled, Impacting People Everywhere for Meaningful Change, on Barack H. Obama Foundation website announcement of Hawkins, Peaceful Solution Character Education Incorporated, meeting in Abilene, Texas. Also quoted Yisrael Hawkins, as founder of the program, saying, We will give you answers to solve any problem you can think of. Just show up, and be ready to get your solution, photograph from a 2013 press release showing Malik Obama with Yisrael Hawkins. Ibid has filed a criminal complaint against Malik Obama with Egyptian Attorney General Hisham Burkate, charging that Obama should be placed on Egypt's terror watch list. Ibid charges Malik was responsible for managing money for the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, which is designated by the Egyptian government as a terrorist organization. Also cited is Malik's involvement as an owner and investment advisor for the Sudan-based Islamic Dawa Organization, or IDO, a group Ibid has linked with terrorist activities associated with Sudan President Omar al-Bashir. Born in Kenya on March 15, 1958, Malik Obama was the first child born to Barack Obama Sr. The son of Kezia, Obama Sr.'s first wife, Malik Obama was only 18 months old when Barack Obama Sr. began undergraduate studies at the University of Hawaii in Honolulu. Having abandoned Kezia in Kenya, Obama Sr. subsequently married Stanley and Dunham, Barack Obama Jr.'s mother, while in Honolulu, according to Barack Obama's account in his autobiography, Dreams for My Father. Malik's tax-exempt problems. That funds contributed in the United States to the Barack H. Obama Foundation may have been diverted to support his multiple wives in Kenya. Malik stated I am a peace activist and my organization is registered as a peacemaking philanthropy in Kenya, Malik said. As head of the Obama clan, I do my part in spreading world peace and human development through the Barack H. Obama Foundation that we established in Kenya. After its founding in 2008, the Barack H. Obama Foundation, operating out of a commercial mail drop in Arlington, Virginia, solicited tax-deductible contributions on the Internet, listing addresses and telephone numbers both in the United States and Kenya without disclosing the group lacked tax-exempt status. In the late 1970s, Yahweh arrived in Miami, Florida, rebranding himself as Yahweh Ben Yahweh, God, the Son of God, according to the Miami Herald. Along with anti-white screeds, Heavily influenced by the most extreme of nation of Islam beliefs, he borrowed ideas from the black Hebrew Israelites, who believe that black people are the true descendants of the ancient Hebrews of the Bible. Impressively dressed in a jeweled turban and flowing white robes, he began attracting followers through his sermons. He dubbed his religious sect the Nation of Yahweh, and at their height, he claimed they numbered around 20,000 in 45 cities, according to the Washington Post. The mayor of Miami was convinced. He later handed him a proclamation declaring Yahweh Ben Yahweh Day. In his teachings, Yahweh told his followers to wear white, claiming, He that overcometh the white man, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, according to the Miami Herald. We are white people's property as long as we keep their name, was another lesson, leading many followers to assume biblical names, often adopting the surname, Israel. At one point he had every adult male line up in a show of loyalty and drop their pants, and for any who weren't circumcised, the leader circumcised them himself. After a small group questioned his teachings and moved out to start a new temple, he branded them as, the hypocrites, and called for their deaths. He talked about it. He was giving instruction, former follower Khalil Amani says in the episode. One of those disgruntled members returned to the temple and demanded to speak to the leader. He was beaten with a hammer, Amani says, and his body and decapitated head were found in the Everglades. 
Two others who left went to police and pointed a finger at the nation of Yahweh. They were then attacked in their home. One died, the other recovered and went into the witness protection program, but no criminal charges were brought. Followers were sent into the streets and ordered to collect $10 a day each and every day, and if they failed, they faced consequences, they were brought into a cafeteria that came to be known as the Room of Understanding. Basically you're on a concrete floor with a thin layer of carpet, Amani recalls. You were made to kneel down on your knees and keep your back straight for four or five hours. In that room there was also guards with sticks that made sure you stayed like you were supposed to. After being sent away to start a temple in another state, Amani returned to find his wife distant, and the leader he'd viewed as a father figure now cold toward him. He later learned that Yahweh ben Yahweh had been convening a weekly closed-door midwife class, where the leader led women in genital examinations along with placing their mouth on another's private area to give CPR to the unborn child, Amani says. Many members of the nation of Yahweh lived communally in a mixed-use complex known as the Temple of Love, located in Miami's historically black enclave of Liberty City. Followers were expected to generate money by selling goods, which included Yahweh-branded drinks and beauty products. With these proceeds and donations from members, the group invested in real estate holdings, including apartment buildings, hotels and supermarkets, which were valued at $9 million in 1990, according to the New York Times. Though the Nation of Yahweh presented itself as a religious organization dedicated to improving black lives by teaching self-reliance and practicing urban renewal, darker things were going on behind the closed doors of the Temple of Love. Those who questioned Yahweh's teachings or practices within the group were subject to discipline, beatings, and in some cases murder. In 1981, former Nation of Yahweh member Aston Green was beheaded after leaving the group, according to the Miami Herald. When his roommates and fellow defectors Carlton Carey and Mildred Banks went to report the incident to police, they were attacked. Carey was fatally shot, and Banks was shot and struck with a machete. She survived the attack. In the fall of 1986, a large contingent from the Nation of Yahweh showed up at a rundown apartment building the group had bought in Opelaka, Florida. Tenants claimed the Yahwehs, armed with wooden staffs, began to forcibly evicted them. Residents Anthony Brown and Rudolf Broussard publicly resisted, and that evening, they were shot to death outside the apartment building, according to the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Police arrested former University of California at Berkeley football player and Yahweh follower Robert Rogier, who went by the name Neariah Israel, and charged him with the murders, according to the New York Times. Rogier would eventually make a deal with prosecutors, accepting a 22-year prison sentence for four murders in exchange for becoming their star witness, according to the Los Angeles Times. Rogier claimed within the nation of Yahweh was a secret group known as the Brotherhood, whom Yahweh referred to as his death angels, according to court documents. They were the group's enforcers and were also encouraged to kill random white people in acts of racial retribution. They would then cut off their victims' ears and then present to Yahweh, who instructed his cult members to kill me a white devil and bring me an ear. In 1992, cult leader Yahweh ben Yahweh, born Hewlin Mitchell Jr., was found guilty in connection with the plotting of 14 murders, two attempted murders and a firebombing. While many would describe the nation of Yahweh founder as a cunning and controlling master manipulator who conned his followers into believing he was the son of God, Yahweh's daughter still believes he was a virtuous and holy man. Following a five-month trial, Yahweh and six other members of the nation of Yahweh were found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder, reported the Los Angeles Times. He was sentenced to 18 years in prison and fined $20,000. Yahweh was paroled in September 2001. The terms of his parole forbade him from being in contact with any past or present members of the nation of Yahweh, his attorney Jane Weintraub told the New York Times, though this was rescinded after he was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2006. He died on May 7, 2007, at his home in Opelaka, Florida. As you can see the evidence and the victims. That were killed. But to his daughter claimed he did no wrong in her eyes. Sound like she has no truth in what she believes. She was brainwashed as the followers were. And if she thinks one minute. This man stood for God of heaven. And people think God of heaven is like this. And he claimed to be black Jesus Christ and has direct his followers. Go out and kill people white or black. For no good reason except for their skin color. Cousin behind the scenes he was a front runner and was getting funded by a leader, Muammar, Gaddafi in Libya. The Libyans were looking for a hit group to act on their behalf in the United States. 
According to two witnesses was that when Yahweh ben Yahweh met with certain religious figures, he was introduced to the Libyan agent that they wanted to deal with someone more subtle. The murders, unbeknownst to the people committing the murders, were demonstration murders for the Libyans to show that he could have people killed and have it done quietly. Yahweh ben Yahweh was born Hewlin Mitchell Jr. in Kingfisher, Oklahoma in 1935, the oldest of 15 children. His father was a Pentecostal minister and his sister is Grammy-winning opera singer Leona Mitchell. Throughout his life, Yahweh adopted several religious practices, and he claimed he knew he was divine by the age of three. He studied psychology in college and later earned a master's degree in economics at Atlanta University. Yahweh then made his way to Chicago, where he became involved with the Nation of Islam. Hewlin Mitchell, Jr., aka Brother Love, the founder of the Nation of Yahweh, had returned to Enid before going to Miami in order to convince some of his family members to join his Hebrew-Israelite religion. Mitchell, choosing to leave the religion of his youth, began looking for other religious paths. The first of these religions was Rosicrucianism, a mystical tradition that claimed secret wisdom about the nature of the relationship between God and humans. Mitchell learned the idea that each person had a spark of the divine from this religion. His wife, Nodi, was not interested in his new religious ideas and was unhappy as a military wife. Mitchell received an honorable discharge from the Air Force and they moved back to Enid, Oklahoma, where Mitchell filed for a divorce. He emphasized that God and all the prophets of the Bible were black and that African Americans would gain knowledge of their true history through him. He also emphasized whites and particularly Jews as infidels and oppressors. A loyalty extreme enough that members allegedly pledged to kill his enemies. Those who dissented could face beatings or, allegedly, death. As he spoke to crowds of thousands around the country and received the blessings of Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan, Mr. Yahweh was controlled the clothing, food, and sex lives of the people in his group. Mr. Yahweh was surrounded by a group of bodyguards called the Circle of Ten, each armed with a six-foot wooden staff, and called the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., that dead dog preacher. In a decade, the nation of Yahweh had accumulated anywhere between eight to one hundred million dollars in assets, most of which were real estate. Within just a few months of the members' arrests, mortgage holders had begun foreclosing on their properties as the sex stopped making monthly payments. In June 1991, a foreclosure suit was filed for the Yahweh Economy Motel at 6320 Biscayne Boulevard claiming they owed $276,000, plus interest and attorney fees. That same month, another foreclosure suit was filed for the Yahweh Resort Hotel at 7350 Biscayne Boulevard claiming they owed $317,477, plus interest. The sect also shut down its Overtown supermarket, Yahweh First Rate Foods, at 1490 NW 3rd Avenue. The Yahweh's owned another supermarket located at the sect's headquarters, but by August, a foreclosure suit was filed for Temple of Love. Its members also claim to have abandoned their past racism and the leader's daughter has apparently stated that all people are children of God. They insist that their current war with the government is a non-violent verbal battle, that their present literature downplays and has nearly erased all past racism. As so they think. In 1982, civil rights activist Georgia Jones Ayers worked with Judge Tom Peterson to open the Alternative Program Incorporated, a non-profit organization that offered an alternative to jail time. Many years later, Congresswoman Carrie Meek got heirs a $2.2 million federal grant to turn the rundown former church into a daycare center and community auditorium. She bought the church for $693,000 in 1998 from Frank Alter, who loaned Yahweh Capital for the building, only to acquire it back when the sect fell behind on the mortgage. According to county records, $1 million was spent on hiring architects and contractors, and about half a million went toward salaries. Georgia Jones Ayers died on February 17, 2015, at the age of 86. And due to the deterioration of the buildings and the extensive damage caused by vandals, the former church building was finally demolished in May 2017. Vantal, 56, is a follower of the late Miami black supremacist cult leader Yahweh Ben Yahweh, charged with the April 2007 murder of his stepson, whose decomposing corpse was found bound and wrapped in trash bags in a Palm Beach canal. Its members also claim to have abandoned their past racism and the leader's daughter has apparently stated that all people are children of God. Which God is she referring to? The God of this world Satan according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 says in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, Satan is the evil in the world. 
and killing and judging people because of their skin color is evil. They insist that their current war with the government is a non-violent verbal battle, that their present literature downplays and has nearly erased all past racism. As so they think and they are still followers. Of his teaching doing the same thing claiming he is Jesus Christ. And I am here to tell you he is not. Everything this man did was evil because of the people who influenced him. To do it. This man never accepted the real Jesus Christ the Son of the living God of heaven. As his Savior and Lord. In his mind he was Jesus Christ. And Satan plants these thoughts into people's minds. To say I am God worship me. It is pride. Same thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven. Patricia Lynn Albert was 12 years old when she first encountered Brother Loves in the 1970s. She was a part of the Mitchell family's Holiness Pentecostal Church. In Enid, Oklahoma. She stated that. Yahweh ben Yahweh used his self-proclaimed divinity to control his followers, who obeyed his instructions even to commit murder and amass money for the movement. Have you heard of the Divine Lorraine Hotel on North Broad Street in Philadelphia? The building's former owner, a man known simply as Father Divine, declared himself God and amassed an international following that some consider a cult. Members of his congregation promised a life of celibacy and surrendered their possessions to him. Explains why some remember Father Divine as a charismatic cult leader and influenced a lot of well-known cult leaders as well. Like Jim Jones ordered a mass murder-suicide that claimed the lives of 909 dedicated members, 304 of them children, almost all of the members died by drinking flavor aid laced with cyanide. And Hewlin Mitchell Jr. or Yahweh Ben Yahweh a black separatist in Miami, Florida. The nation of Yahweh founder as a cunning and controlling master manipulator who conned his followers into believing he was the son of God, he hires attorney Ellis Rubin to put up a front in the media to show that he was innocent of the bad things. In 1987, Mr. Yahweh's father, a Pentecostal preacher, spoke to a reporter from the St. Petersburg Times in Florida. I was there when he was born, October 27, 1935, holding his mama's hand, he said. You can't get closer than that, and he is not the son of God. As he claimed to be. He was a deceiver to a lot of people. Today, Mitchell remains an advocate for her father and is the author of The Biological Children of Yahweh Ben Yahweh Speak Out, a book that defines his message and purpose. She says she wrote this book because she wants people to visualize the man that has been taken from you, from his biological children, and from his biological grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. It is important that the world and all of the nations of the earth come to know of his greatness, his purpose, and his message. This book will take you on a journey that will define his message and purpose, and what it was like to be the biological children of Yahweh ben Yahweh. This book will make you laugh, it will make you cry, it will make you think like never before, causing all men both small and great to study like never before. Now to his daughter she claimed he did no wrong in her eyes. Sound like she has no truth in what she believes. She was brainwashed as the followers were. And maybe she only seen what he wanted her to see. She was maybe very young then. And she was not around him 24-7. And if she thinks one minute. This man stood for God of heaven. And people of the world. Think God of heaven is like this. And he claimed to be black Jesus Christ and has direct his followers. Go out and kill people white or black. For no good reason except for their skin color. And it looks too much like a ISIS killings. Why would a man need bodyguards around him if he was Jesus Christ? Think about that. She just wants to play on your sympathy. Did you know he knew T.D. Jakes? What does this tell you now? The Libyans were looking for a hit group to act on their behalf in the United States. According to two witnesses was that when Yahweh ben Yahweh met with certain religious figures, he was introduced to the Libyan agent that they wanted to deal with someone more subtle. The murders, unbeknownst to the people committing the murders, were demonstration murders for the Libyans to show that he could have people killed and have it done quietly. The young Americans drawn to these New Age religious movements. Think it is biblical by the people who are twisting the scriptures in the Bible God's word. And God of heaven warned people. If they do such a thing. They will pay for it. But they do not seem to believe that it is true. In Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 it says. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. And in Revelation 22 verses 18 to 19 it says, 
Verse 18 For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19 Says And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Thought that Zangwill's vision of a land of opportunity where race, religion, and national origin might have been good. But making people doing something. By threatening them or controlling them. Is not the right way to do anything. Thank you for watching. And we hope you found this video informative and revealed things you did not know before. As doing this videos of these cults. And how they deceived people. And hurt sweet innocent children. It makes us so heartbroken and so angry in a spiritual way. These people have no heart that is the bottom line. God of heaven is loving and kind and these kind of people make it bad for the good ones who love Jesus Christ and want the world to know him and his love. And spread the good news. This is why we do what we do. To change lives and for people to know the truth. And we pray with all our heart. That God will keep you and your family safe and bless you. Is our prayer. Take care and we will be back with another video.